From every nation, we worship you. Hallelujah! Oh,
dear Lord, we thank you for allowing this assembly today on this hollow ground. We thank you for getting us through 15 months of this world that's never seen before. We thank you, Lord, for your grace as you've allowed so many to get their vaccination right here in your house. We thank you, Lord, that as a gift to so many that needed this act of love in a timely fashion that only you could provide. We thank you, Lord, for showing us that through all the hate and pain that so many have suffered, that our faith in you can get us through anything. We thank you, Lord, that through your work, you have placed the right people in the White House and that through faith, change is real. With your grace and glory, our sick and healing will rise again. With your grace, our glory, our students will walk on their graduation day. With your grace, our careers and businesses will see better days. You've shown us that faith in you is faith in science, faith in each other, and that as long as we place all of that in your mighty hand, that our pain is no more. We thank you, Lord, for being that guiding light and that that guiding light is showing us your love. Let us say amen. right we need some sunshine today who's ready for some sunshine the sun being choir anybody want to hear them hallelujah here they come this is the choir that is two to six years old and and we need to get hallelujah here we go
belong to your hood, man. I know you belong to your wife. I know you belong to your family. I know you belong to your job. But do you? Come on. Come on, son, babe. Whatever you have, praise the Lord. children to hear you. Help them know they're not alone. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Come on. You, you let those children out shout those horns. You let those children out shout those horns. You let these babies praise God. The Sunbeam Choir of DuPage AME Church under the direction today of Sister Shanice Spencer. Thank you, parents. Uh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give them another praise before hallelujah. Thank you. We're moving on in this worship now. And this is Annual Class Leader Day. Thank you, Brother Jones. Annual Class Leader Day. And we're so thankful for the DuPage Amy Church Class Leaders Council under the coordination of Sister Tanisha Dorsey. Let's give her a praise support as she comes. to my 
and beloved DuPage family and friends, greetings on behalf of the Resilience 2021 Class Theater Council. Amen. My name is Tanisha Dorsey, and I am the Class Theater Coordinator. Today is Class Leader Day, and we are excited. All right, all right. During this COVID-19 pandemic, which I am believing is coming to an end, we all need to be encouraged to be resilient and to keep going. So our theme this year is taken from Galatians 6, 9 through 10, which states, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Over the past 18 months, all of us have been impacted in some way by the coronavirus. But one thing we know for sure is that we are all in this together, which is why I would like to not only encourage our class leaders, but also the entire DuPage Nation to not become weary in doing good. Many of, many of us, if not all of us, are experiencing COVID fatigue. We have been tired, if currently we aren't tired right now, but in the midst of it all, we have decided to not give up, to do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of faith, the DuPage family. During this pandemic, our class leaders have continued to do good, and today I want to recognize you guys. I want to celebrate you. What exactly has the class leaders been up to? Well, I'm happy you asked. Some of the things your class leaders have done include, but are not limited to, managing the outreach of 42 small groups of members via phone call, Zoom meetings, emails, and cards. They have participated in the 2020 Spiritual Stimulus Campaign by doing welfare checks and check-ins to members of DuPage. They have participated in boosting connectivity campaigns in support of other ministries within, within our church, such as Pull Up and Praise, Usher's Day, Reach Food Pantry, the Revival and Bible Study, our new member outreach committee. They have worked on and submitted solutions to capture virtual visitors information. Our class leaders participated in Angel Tree and, and the virtual Christmas celebration. The membership care committee ma mailed out more than 200 cards and made more than 55 calls in 2020. Then we have the new member immersion class. They created a virtual new member class, y'all. That was a way to acclimate our new members, five of which joined virtually, amen? And then they created a platform for them to complete their class requirements and be welcome today in fellowship. Hallelujah. We are excited that we will be introducing to you 13 new members to you just shortly. Amen. And in 2021, we will introduce a special day to honor our veterans, which will be led by Brother James Durant, and our sister Cherry Haywood, amen? Now, we are not done yet. We wanna take this moment and say thank you, class leaders. We celebrate each of you and acknowledge you and your determination to do good, especially during these times. We praise God for the opportunity to serve our DuPage family, and may the Lord continue to bless and keep each of you. At this time, I would now like to personally thank our pastors, Reverend James F. Miller and Reverend Lana Parks Miller, Miller for the leadership and the um, executive committee of the Class Leader Council. That is comprised of Brandon Akins and Jeanette Childs for the membership care, if you guys could come forward. And then Rosemary Holloway for the new member immersion class or committee. And then Cedric Bell, James Ferguson, and Lewis Himes are the chairs of our new member at Visitor Outreach. The executive committee 
will take this time to introduce their team and acknowledge their commitment. Thank you all. God bless you. Your class leader coordinator, Tanisha. Good morning, DuPage. My name is Brandon Akins, and I uh, lead the membership care committee. And our team sends out cards, we make phone calls, and we visit, but not during the pandemic season. Would my members please raise their hand? Ah, thank you. Good morning, DuPage. Good morning. My name is Cedric Fell. I'm president of the New Members Business Outreach, and our committee welcomes all the new visitors and welcomes the members who, are, who come to the church to visit. Would the members of that committee please raise their hand? Good morning, DuPage. My name is Rosemary Holloway, chairperson of the new Immersion class. We maintain a weekly presence of all the members by class and auxiliary, representing them until Pastor Miller arrives, and keep records of all the new members' attendance on schedule. Will the new member immersion class please raise your hand? Amen. Again, thank you all in our 2021 Class Leader Council. Praise God. Amen. Rosemary, if you can uh, step forward. When I call your name, new member, you will come forward and you will get your pen and be welcomed into fellowship. Amen. We have, you're going to shake your hand. So you're going to come this way. You want to come on that side. And then you're going to uh, see Rosemary and keep going. So Patrice Anand, Charlene Bolden. Howard Bolden, Mabel Buckner, Takana Cochran, Jacqueline Fair, amen, Ashley Howard, Harry Howard, Tracy Fuller, Lee Gaines, Latanya Gaines, Angela Patterson, <laughs> Angela Patterson, Charles Patterson, Candace Westbrook. Amen. Let's welcome our new members, everyone. it is to be in this place together we just want to take a moment now while everybody's kind of getting situated to just welcome all visitors or whoever may be even hearing this uh, and, and who is on the uh, on, on the stream that is with us as a visitor we're glad to have you every time you're there and so we want to sing our song of welcome to you with everybody's help because there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this congregation. And we love you all. We love you. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. I can't hear you.
Praise the Lord. Is God blessing us today? Amen. Is God blessing us today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that sun coming. Come on, praise the Lord. Look at that. Where did that blue sky come from? Hallelujah. All the clouds have been blown away. Praise the Lord. And are we yet alive to see each other's face? Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 16 and 2. On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save as God has prospered you that the collections may be taken beforehand and that the praise will be ready to be heard. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the blessings of this day. You preserved us to this hour. You have elevated us with this wonderful sunbeam youth choir, our children, our babies. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, God, in Jesus' name, we pray you'll bless these gifts that are received now. Let the words of, of all of the singers bless the soul of every worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we hear those horns? Hey, hey.
Yeah. You sing it out there. Yes, he is good. Can we hear you? Sing it louder. I hear you. One more time. Back there in the red, I see you. One more time. Boy, he. She's getting down. Praise him. Help him out. Here we go. Boy, he. Boy, he is good. Yes, he is good. 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 Boy, he is good. Boy, he is good. Boy, he is good. Boy, he is good. Yes, he is good. Boy, he is good. Last time he is good. As we are waiting for the ushers, and I tell you, if there's one group I can wait on, it's the ushers. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Uh, praise God. Take your, don't, don't take your time, but don't hurry either. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Here they come. Uh, we want to thank uh, the support for today, and especially from the Lord. Come on, let's praise God for this sunshine. Woo, it's getting warm out here. Doesn't it feel good? And um, uh, we, of course, everyone's on the way back. We're getting closer. We don't know when, but we'll be here again on the fourth Sunday of June because that's annual Women's Day. And uh, you'll be hearing more and more and more about that. And, of course, uh, uh, we'll get the details of our return. You should expect everybody in the church a survey this week. going to ask you one main question. Are you ready to go back? Don't answer now. Hallelujah. Just wait. You can pray about it. But uh, all things come of thee, O Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. We are we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. DuPage Church is a church that uh, has members that uh, relocate and retire and move. It, like first Sunday, we say, as these leave, let others come. But we want to thank God for every soul that touches our heart. Every pilgrim God sends to journey with us along the way. To say farewell and to let them share with us. The director of our Sunbeam Choir, Shanice Spencer, is relocating. And this is uh, her last Sunday here in this area. I want the family to come up. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. I want to hear every horn. Somebody go get in your car and blow that horn. for words. Um, we love you. Uh, we're relocating to California, which is where I'm from. I miss my mommy. I miss my sister. I miss my nephew. Um, undoubtedly, we will miss you. 
We came here 16 years ago when Trey was a wee, j just eligible to be a sunbeam, really. My children have been baptized here. We've grown in our faith. Uh, I joined church because I was recovering from brain surgery, laying in the bed and saw DuPage on the TV. I am unequivocally certain that that neurological condition that I was born with was the, it, it was, God gave me that blessing so that he could bring me here. There was work for our family to do for God's kingdom. There was service that God put on our heart for his people. And we're thankful for the opportunity that we've had here. We pray that you have felt loved by us because we certainly have felt loved by you. We will visit often, and there is a pillow in Los Angeles with your name on it. If you ever travel west, please look us up. Pray for us. We are praying for you every day. We pray for our church family, and we just thank you. I thank you for pouring into my children. I thank you for their choir directors, their Sunday school teachers, just everyone. I, I know that you've been praying for us, and I just thank you. I pray God's blessings upon you. I pray for favor upon the DuPage Nation. I thank for I pray for favor upon God's people, and I, I just thank you. I thank you so much. We love you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Trey, come up here. Trey is uh, works in our media department. And um, one of our fine teenagers that we're very proud of, one of our high school graduates. Uh, he's not going to be here on you Sunday, but I'm going to ask Sister Connie Brown to come now with the gift that your support has allowed us to add on to the scholarships that were given. Uh, you can't have all of your money going in brick and mortar. You got to build lives. <laughs> Every high school graduate is going to get an additional $1,000 as a gift from DuPage Church. I want to thank the committee, Brandon and Connie and Angela. And um, I, want, I want you to... Be what you know you can be. Take that and multiply. One day, when you get rich and famous, Trey, I want you to pull up here and here one Sunday morning. They won't know it. Y'all rent the longest limousine that Ken Jackson had. Get you a four thousand dollar suit and a thousand dollar pair of shoes. Ron will tell you where to shop. And come up in here and at the death mask at the invitation that you'd like to say a word if you could, a testimony. And we'll shout all day. Amen, somebody. I didn't think it was gonna be this hard, you know, when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, I mean, we're not leaving, it's just goodbye for now, but um, I just wanna say thank you to every single person that I've had a communication with. Um, you guys deserve a lot of credit of who I am today, of the young man that I am is because of you guys, um, in many different ways, whether it's from choir to men's day to just believing in me. Um, I want to thank you all. Um, I love you all. It's um, been a pleasure and an honor. And, um, I've been here for 16 years of my life. You know, I'm turning 18 at the end of this month. So you guys have been with me for every step of the way. And you know, I love you all. And I'm going to be back. You know, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. I'll always be a DuPage member. I'm going to visit as much as I can. And yeah, I'm, go I'm going to miss you guys. But you know. You know, it is what it is. It's, it's a new chapter, but um, you guys will be 
very missed. I want to say a special thank you to Miss Tiffany and Mr. Kendall. Um, I saw you guys in the video. And to everyone else that was in the video, um, thank you very much. It was really appreciated, and I, I really loved it. And I felt the love and much love back to you guys. So to anyone that was in that video, you know who you are. Um, I wouldn't name names, but I'm probably going to forget one, and I don't want to. But, um, yeah, I want to say thank you very much for that, and I love you all. Thank you. All right, praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise God for the Spencer. Yeah, it's all right to hug. If you had your shot, now don't sue me. Getting sentimental and catch something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody, from your car. There you go. You all can hug all you want because the praise team is about to sing after I introduce the preacher. It's preaching time, and we're on holy ground, and the spirit is here. The Reverend Connie Dickerson, one of our ministers at DuPage AME Church, one of the young corporate executives, young past uh, parents uh, that we have that the Lord has blessed us with. Her son just sang in the Sunbeam Choir. We love her. And uh, we're looking for the word. So we, she, we know she's educated to the graduate level, uh, but we love Reverend Dickerson. Come on, praise team. Just sing to the glory. And uh, the next voice you'll be here will be Reverend Connie Dickerson, the youth minister, pastoral care, and just all around servant of the Lord here at DuPage. Yeah. <laughs> 
You tried them for yourself and you know that he is a way maker. When your back is against the wall, you feel like you can't go on. He's a way maker. He's a provider. Can I get a witness this morning that God is a provider? He made a way when you was at your end, when you didn't think that you were going to make the end, Peter. Baby, he took what you had. He took that little and gave you much. A man who was able to take five loaves of bread and multiply it. He's able. He's able. How many you know that he was a, a light in the darkness? I don't know what you had in the dark times, but God is a light. God is a light when there is darkness. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. Do I get a, can I get a witness? God will make a way to see. Kendall said that the lady in the red was giving God praise. Let me tell you why she was giving God praise. Because 18 months ago, she, she was in a hospital bed with her granddaughter who had a tumor on the brain. And this morning, the baby's song in a choir. That's the kind of God we serve. Solicit your prayers on this morning. I've been through hell this week. It started with Sunday, the devil attacking my son. First, he got his head stuck. Don't ask me how, because I don't know. 
But first he got his head stuck in a elliptical machine. And I got a visit from the fire department because we couldn't get it out. Then on top of that, the devil began to attack his mind. He said, Mama, maybe I need to die. I don't deserve to be your son. I couldn't understand it at the time and so I began to call the prayer warriors and they said, Connie, you know what, what the devil is trying to do? He knows that if he attacks your son, that he's going to keep you from preaching the word of God. So this morning I solicit your prayers because he's covered from the top of his head yep. to the soles of his feet. But I had to do what my cousin said. She said, Connie, you have to get so deep in the word of God that nothing else matters. So this morning as I prepare to bring you the word, help me to remember that nothing else matters. If you have your Bibles, I know you have phones, most of you do, so pull out your phone, go to your Bible app, and go to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 5. And I'll be reading the NLT version. And now a word to you who are elders in the church. I too am an elder and I witness the suffering of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people who are assigned to your care, but lead them by your own example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are young must accept the authorities of the elders, and all of you dress yourself in humility as it relates to one another. For God opposes the pride, but give humble, give grace to the humble. During my youth, you would more than likely find me hanging out with my two cousins, Maine and Timmy. We were the three musketeers. During the summer, we would get into so much trouble causing our neighbors grief. One of our favorite things to do was to ring doorbells and run. When one of us got in trouble, we all got into trouble. We shared the consequences. We were as thick as thieves. Since I was the only girl, I did a lot of boyish things. Believe it or not, I loved playing football until one day one of them hit me in the stomach and knocked the wind out of me. I think that's the day that my football career came to an abrupt end. From that point forward, I left playing football to them, but that didn't stop me from climbing trees or playing other sports that didn't involve contact. We were practically inseparable. They had my back and I had theirs. On this Class Leader Sunday, for just a few moments, please ponder with me on the subject, shared responsibility. Let us pray. Most gracious and almighty God, it is preaching time. But Lord, we know that the word cannot go forth until the real preacher comes. So Lord, I pray that you would anoint the words on this page, that you would anoint my tongue so that I may speak with power, that God, you would show up in a mighty way and have your way. Church the heart and the mind so that the word is receptive. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Shared responsibility. This morning in our scripture, we find the words written by Apostle Peter, reminding the leaders that they are called to special service. With this calling comes responsibility. The first responsibility is to care for one another. 
I believe one of the biggest problems with the world today is that we have become so self-absorbed. We don't care about anyone but ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all about self-care because I love me some self-care, but we have to find a balance. Can you imagine what the church or the world would be like if we carried the burdens of one another? What a wonderful church and world this would be. We have been placed together as one body. Church, it's no coincidence that we're all here. We're all here for a purpose. We have been placed here so that we can care for each other. This is God's design for the church. When we carry the burden for one another, the burden becomes a little lighter. We never know what is going on in a person's life. I know it's been a long time because we hadn't been to church in a long time. But I need you to do me a favor. You know that's what the preachers say, do me a favor. Look at the person to your right. Look them in the eyes and repeat after me. I am committed to caring for you. Caring for the people take a lot of work. Caring for people you do not like, that's hard work. Caring for people that you know talks about you behind your back, that's hard work. Caring for people that lie on you, that's hard work. Caring for people that don't look like you, act like you, or think like you, that's hard work. But Jesus commands, that we, commands us that we take care of the people. You see, in John 21, Jesus tells Peter, if you love me, care for my sheep. We have a duty to care for one another. This week, a single mom who was an Uber driver earned her associate's degree. What's the significance behind it, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Latonya Young, a single parent, earned a living as a hairstylist by day and being an Uber driver by night. One particular night, she picked up a passenger outside of the Atlanta Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and they began to talk. She told the driver that she had dropped out of college because she had a balance that she couldn't afford to pay off. She received a call a few days later from the school that changed her life. Her passenger had paid off the balance. You see, the passenger by the name of Kevin was quoted as saying, I could have bought new clothes or I could have helped someone out. And what has come back to me has come back to me a hundredfold and I would do it a hundred times over. Church, this is not only a great example of love, but it's a great example of caring. When we take the time to care for others, God will bless us. What if we took on the same attitude? We say we love God, but we don't want to care for God's people. We see someone in need standing on the corner begging, and we don't want to give because we think they have an arterial motor for the money. I think, I used to think that way, but now when I give, give it, I give it from the heart and I tell God to deal with them if their motives are not right. It's not my place to judge because I don't know what they're going through. My place is to care as God commanded me to. What if Jesus had said, Father, I'm not giving my life for these people. They're not going to keep my command. Some of them are going to even deny my existence. They're going to fight and kill each other so Lord, I'm not going to do it, but Jesus cared enough to die a shameful death. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that Jesus cared. He cared, he cared, he cared. Church, we have a responsibility to repay the favor and honor Jesus' commandment to care for the sheep. It's a shared responsibility, and we have to play a part. God has saved us to serve, and we should serve with humility. The first responsibility is to care for others, and the second responsibility is not to overestimate ourselves, but to be humble. You don't have to say amen, but I know you don't want 
to tell, because I know you don't want to tell on yourself, but at one point or another, we have all wrestled with the big P known as pride. We don't want to serve because we think more highly of ourselves than we should. I should be the chair, not the co-chair. I should be the president, not the vice president. I should sing lead, not bag up. But Proverbs 16 and 18 tells us pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. God will only dwell where there's a contrite and humble spirit. Pride is something that each one of us has to had to deal with. We are not exempt. By pride, the devil became the devil. Pride and envy was behind the religious ruler desire to crucify Jesus. You see, the Pharisee did all kinds of act that on the surface appeared to be humble. They clothed themselves with sackcloth, bowed their head in contrition, gave alms to the poor, but Jesus said it was all to be seen by men. It was a good show, but when it came down to it, Jesus stepped on their territory and they crucified him. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, then we have to step that we have to step down, not step up. If Jesus had to humble himself, then surely we have to do the same thing. When Jesus humbled himself, uh, God exalted him up. If we're going to be the people of God, we can really make a difference in the world today. Then our views of ourselves have to be a little different. If Jesus had not looked at our interests, we would all have died and remained condemned to our sins. When we humble ourselves and do what God called us to do, God receives the glory and the praise rather than us. God has a divine plan for each of our lives. If we can only be fulfilled, we totally depending on God. This is only possible when we live a life of humility. It is humility that allows us to acknowledge that God has a claim on our life as our Lord and Savior. It is humility that says I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. It is humility that is the beginning of wisdom and only those are who humble see and understand the truth of the kingdom of God. On the other hand, when you're prideful, you have a false realization that you don't need God. You can do it better than God. Pride prevents us uh, from following God's plan, which leads to rebellion. When we are so prideful, we attempt to carry out uh, our own plans, which lead to conflict uh, of God's plan, which leads to our destruction. Humility uh, is trusting God's ability to lead and and direct us. Humility obeys God. God requires humility from everyone. God is only oppressed when we put God first. God does not need us running around pretending to be more important than we really are. God needs us to put God first. It's only when we put God first that we can serve God in a way that is pleasing to God. Don't let your love for the position come before your loyalty to God. Humility puts God first, and when we do so, we will do God's will. Jesus put God first. He taught, he suffered, and he died that we might be saved. Service to others is rewarding, and it's very easy when you put God first. We all have something to offer. We should humble ourselves and serve God. When we humble ourselves, we can meet the needs of others. We cannot serve everyone, but we can serve someone. Let me say that again. We can't serve everyone, but we can serve someone. And if everybody is serving somebody, then everyone is served. Church is a shared responsibility. We have a responsibility to care for others, humble ourselves, and finally, we have a responsibility to lead by example. I was the oldest between me and my cousins. Many times my grandmother would tell me I was the oldest, therefore I needed to act like it. You see, if truth be told, 
I was the ringleader of most of the stuff that we got into. That's why I'm not surprised by the stuff that Brayden does. <laughs> Miss Sally always tells me Brayden, I'm like, yep, that's my child. He's acting just like his mama. <laughs> What I didn't understand at the time was that my actions had influence on them. Class leaders, your actions has influence on the church. People do not know what you are, know that what you're doing does not go unnoticed. I know it's class leader Sunday, but may I remind you all that we have a shared responsibility. Whether you know it or not, we are all leaders in some capacity. You see, your life could change the trajectory of someone else's life. I heard a preacher say, when God wants God's people delivered from oppressor Pharaoh, God uses a leader named Moses. When God needs Jerusalem wall rebuilt, God uses a leader named Naomi, Nehemiah, excuse me. When God wants God people to experience a golden era, God uses a leader named David. When God wants to build the temple, God uses a leader named Solomon. When God needs a statement prophet, God uses a leader named Paul. When God needs a statement prophet, God uses a leader named Isaiah. Yes, I know the Bible. And when God needed a fearless church planner, he uses a leader named Paul. God is once again calling the leaders to do the will of God. We sell ourselves short and do a disservice to the church when we allow the enemy to make us believe that we have to be perfect to serve God. Let me let you in on a secret. If God wanted perfect preach people, there would be no preachers. Preachers, can I get an amen? God doesn't require perfection, but what God does require is that we make an effort. All of the leaders, Moses, Nehemiah, David, Solomon, Isaiah, and Paul were ordinary, imperfect people that was willing to do the will of God. God doesn't need us, but God desires to use each and every one of us. God desires to use our hand, our feet, our heart to accomplish the will of God. God doesn't need us, but God uses us, and that should be an honor. God will not make us do it. God chose us, but we have to accept the call. When God chose us, it was not by a mistake. God knows what God is doing and who God is calling. I surely thought that God had the wrong number when he called me to ministry. Many times I still wonder, Lord, are you sure about this thing? But class leaders, God is calling you to go to work. Church, God is calling you to go to work. In our scripture this morning, Peter is asking the leaders to lead with compassion and not out of compulsion to lead according to the will of God and not seek anything in return. For some personal glory or true motives will eventually come out, thus hindering our leadership. Lead as God leads us. Through caring for those that God has placed in your charge, humbly accepting the call of to God from God and begin to lead. Class leader, accept your call and begin to lead. Church, accept your call and begin to lead. How will you lead? How you lead will provide an example to the body of Christ. There's always someone watching. In the words of Michael Jackson, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Well, that is true. I don't have no privacy. Especially if you have little people. They're always watching what you do and say. God knows they do. 
Because Braden said some stuff, and I'm like, yep, he got that from me. But God doesn't define leadership as the world defines it. We define good leaders by their ability to follow them, but a great way to lead by example is found in 1 Timothy. I'm almost done. Paul tells Timothy, let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself as an example of those who believe. Paul gave Timothy five ways in which he could set an example for the believers of the church. He told Timothy to be an example in speech. In other words, let the words that come from your mouth be pleasing to God. The second thing he told Timothy was be an example in conduct. I already said that people are watching you. We are to conduct ourselves as people of God and people of faith. The third way Timothy was to be an example of how he could de- was to demonstrate and walk to demonstrate faith and walk in love. We are called to be an example of love in how we live our lives and care for those around us. The fourth way that we have to be an example is in our area of faith. People of God, do not doubt what God has placed within you. Do not doubt the spiritual gifts of how God is going to use them. We need to be people of faith in every areas of our life. The fifth way that Paul stated that Timothy was to be example was in purity. You see, in the early New Testament churches, as there is today, there were many ways for a believer of God to reject the cleansingness uh, that God had provided through the blood of Jesus. Paul told Timothy to be an example of purity, reject all things that would cause him to be unclean before God. This would include any type of sin that would cause us to be unclean. We're called uh, to be an example that those who are well, for those who are watching, class leader, accept your calling, begin to lead, uh, be an example of us so that others can follow how you talk, uh, how you conduct yourself, how your demonstration of love, your faith and purity. People of God, accept your calling. Begin to lead and be the example that others can follow in how you talk, uh, your conduct, your, your demonstration of love, your faith and your purity. Church, we are in this together. We have a shared responsibility. Do you believe it this morning? The doors of the church are now open. over 2,000 years ago. Because since I was little, my grandma been saying, was saying two, over 2,000 years ago. So over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross so that we could have a right to the tree of life. This morning, I don't know who this word was for, But I do know that the devil tried to stop me from preaching this word. Yesterday, Reverend Miller sent me a text. (laughs) And my response back was, is God telling you to preach? (laughs) It would have lightened the burden for me. But God ordained this word at this time because he knew that somebody needed to hear he knew that somebody knew that there was a calling on their lives he knew that someone would make an excuse but I already told you you don't have to be perfect for God desires an effort. So this morning, 
if you're watching on the airwaves, if you're sitting in your car, if God is speaking to you this morning, will you come? If you're watching from the airwaves, just put in the text or the chat. I want to be a member. Most of our new members over the last 18 months join by watching us on the airway. We, we, we offer Christ unto you. Oh, my brother, will you come? We offer Christ to you. truly give you brand new life. He's a God that will bring light to a dark situation. Will you come this morning? change your life. today. Praise God. Congratulations, class leaders. Thank you for your service. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the new members that we fellowship in today. Praise God. A chance to learn how to love a little better. Thank God for the service and the ministry and the love for Shanice Spencer and the family. Go on eagle's wings, and the blessing of the Lord will be there with you. As we prepare for the benediction now, I have to announce that one of our beloved ones has gone from grace to glory. Reverend Marilyn Brown was called home to be with the Lord yesterday. Marilyn started uh, here in the ministry. She's Reverend... Lana and my first person to go into the ministry under us. She was the first youth minister after Reverend Lana here at the church. And uh, attorney uh, and great pastor, uh, most recently of Christ our Redeemer Church in Kankakee, a poor area that she ministered to and served. We're proud of him, proud to have been associated with him. We don't have result, uh, uh, arrangements yet, but they will be forthcoming. Pray for the family and thank God uh, for the fellowship we share uh, together. Let's praise God again for the class leader, council, hallelujah, and praise God for yourself. Come on, let the neighborhood know we're here. Uh, come on, they'll be waiting for us next week, wondering where we are, hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
have a shared responsibility to care for one another. Not to overestimate ourselves, but to be humble and finally lead by example. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ever think, according to God's power that is at work with us, within us, to God be the glory forever and ever. Let us all sing together.